then we have seen the role of an environmental engineer uh, what is your role as an engineer for the betterment of the environment we have seen we have seen uh, eight different points under this category and then in lecture 2 we have seen about ecosystem which is a uh, uh, community of uh, living organisms in conjunction with the non living organ components and we have seen the definition of the ecosystem and uh, in the lecture 2 i have uh, explained in detail about the different types of the ecosystem so natural ecosystem artificial ecosystem and what are the categories under the natural ecosystem uh, the aquatic and terrestrial what are the different uh, types of the aquatic ecosystems and what are the different types of terrestrial ecosystems so i hope you have understood uh, uh, these concepts very carefully uh, very uh, clearly uh, because you need to uh, face a lot of uh, multiple choice questions from this particular concept then we have seen about the structure of the ecosystem um, um, the abiotic components and the biotic components uh, abiotic components which are physical in their nature or non living and the biotic components which are living so we have seen the different types of uh, abiotic components uh, like uh, climate and adaptive factors and the different types of biotic components can be producers consumers and decomposers i think my lecture 2 ended here uh, in this picture so uh, lecture 3 we are going to start with uh, uh, a concept uh, which defines this and then we'll go into the subsequent concepts of the ecosystem uh, yeah i think this is a slide in which uh, uh, we have stopped in the last uh, uh, lecture 2 where you have seen the interrelationship that exists in the ecosystem how sun plays a crucial role in starting the processes of the ecosystem and we have seen uh, what happens to the solar energy which is taken by the plants they are going to uh, do a process called as photosynthesis they are going to produce food by themselves this food is consumed by herbivores herbivores are consumed by carnivores and this series of consumption uh, of energy that is derived from the solar energy to by the plants is taken up by the uh, herbivores and carnivores and the process keeps going on but um, while doing this uh, the plants uh, are going to uh, plants and animals means the plants which are here and the herbivores and carnivores all of them are going to give something and take something from the atmosphere this is where atmosphere comes into picture so uh, you know that plants are going to uh, give out oxygen and take in carbon dioxide and uh, herbivores and carnivores are going to give out carbon dioxide and take in the oxygen along with the uh, uh, consumption of water happening parallelly by both the plants and uh, herbivores and carnivores everything comes from atmosphere and also with the soil if not herbivores and carnivores plants are going to have a relationship so that is the reason plants are given such an important position because plant is the only living thing that is there in the biosphere which maintains a balanced relationship with all the components of the atmosphere so uh, plants are going to uh, derive nutrients and water from the soil and uh, that is how plants are going to exist and this process keeps going on unless and until uh, there is a, a death or uh, you know uh, what can i say the non existence by virtue of uh, climatic changes or by virtue of aging factor in the case of animals and human beings when the death of uh, uh, these uh, plants or uh, animals happen the decomposers come into the picture these are called as detrivores right so what the detrivores do to the de to the process of uh, to the dead plants or animals is they are going to decompose them and that is also not going to go for a waste the decomposed matter or the uh, uh, energy that comes because of the decomposition of the plants and the animals is going to be absorbed either by the atmosphere or it gets assimilated into the soil which is once again used by the plants and animals themselves and this is the process that keeps going on this is the dynamic relationship that is existing in the environment and remember once again everything starts from solar energy so that is what we have seen in the last class so the same uh, uh, concept whatever is explained in this uh, previous picture is uh, given in the form of definitions in this so you can see the non-living factors are called as abiotic factors abiotic factors are of two different types climatic factors and adaptive factors and uh, these are the examples of the climatic factors these are the examples of adaptive factors which i have explained in the in the diagram then these are the biotic components so biotic components are the uh, living organisms 
which includes plants, animals, microorganisms like bacteria and fungi, and they are present in an ecosystem uh, 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 in the in the biotic uh, you know portion of the ecosystem. And uh, on the basis of their role, this is important, right? This I have explained, but I am going to further explain in this particular area. So, on the basis of their role in the ecosystem, the biotic components can be defined as producers, consumers, and decomposers, also called as reducers, right? So, uh, what, what are the uh, what, what are the basic require what, what are the basic uh, definitions that you need to know for a producer for a consumer for a decomposer let us try to see you can see what are producers producers also technically termed as autotrophs i already told you auto means by themselves trophos means feeding something that can feed by themselves are called as autotrophs and the only living component that can feed itself is a plant or a tree Right. So the because all of you know that uh, tree, tree, trees have the leaves and leaves have a, a pigment called as chlorophyll. Chlorophyll can absorb the solar energy and there is going to be a process called as photosynthesis that happens. And because of a process called as photosynthesis, energy gets produced in the plants in the form of glucose. All of you have studied this in your uh, basic biology in your school days. So green plants have chlorophyll with the help of which they trap the solar energy and change it into chemical energy of uh, carbohydrates using simple inorganic compounds namely water and carbon dioxide they, they just need water and they just need carbon dioxide if it has solar energy water and carbon dioxide it can start producing uh, glucose so this process is what is called as photosynthesis and uh, as the green plants manufacture their own food they are known as autotrophs. Auto means self, trophos means feeder. Right? The chemical energy stored by the producers is utilized partly by the producers for their own growth and survival and the remaining is stored in the plant parts for their future use. So, uh, please do understand that the plants are going to basically produce glucose for themselves. Right? They, they are going to produce food for themselves. They, they are going to produce food for their existence. Right? But this is an ecosystem. And this ecosystem is going to be existent only if energy transfer happens. So, uh, the energy transfer process that was understood to be, you know, uh, existent in the ecosystem is by means of uh, depending on something else for energy luckily the only uh, uh, you know living component that is there in the biosphere that can produce food by themselves is a plant or a tree and no other uh, you know uh, living component that is there in the biosphere can produce food by themselves because we don't have uh, chlorophyll we can't photosynthesize we can't produce food by ourselves an animal can't produce food by itself right so, there will be an initial dependence that has to happen on something that is pre-existing and the pre-existing form of the energy that is already there is understood to be a plant. So, if you, if you ask in the biotic, uh, in, the, in the biosphere of the four different components of the environment, if, if someone asks uh, in the biosphere which is the most primitive uh, existing uh, uh, living component of the biosphere uh, we have to say that it is a plant or a tree it, it, that should be the, the most primitive because that is where they have first trapped the energy and the, depending on them the rest of this, the, the biosphere uh, should have got built so evolutionary history of biosphere if you if you go through it is quite complicating to understand, right? So uh, the, the the producers are uh, uh, such uh, uh, crucial components of this biosphere because they are the initiators of linking the physical factors with the biotic factors or a biosphere. So unless and until a plant is there, the link can't establish because plant is linking the physical form of the energy in the in the environment to the biological component which is the biosphere so this is a very important uh, point that you need to know first of all with reference to the producers 
then the consumers uh, the animals lack chlorophyll as i said and are unable to synthesize their own food therefore they depend on the producers for their food and they are known as heterotrophs heteros means others trophos means feeder something that depends on something else any any animal or organism that depends on something else are called as heterotrophs which are categorized into four different categories right so um, uh, you can see uh, uh, primary consumers secondary consumers tertiary consumers quaternary consumers right uh, primary consumers are also called as first order consumers or primary consumers are also called as herbivores so simple question multiple choice question i might be asking which of these are termed as herbivores i will be giving choices like primary consumers secondary consumers tertiary quaternary please do understand that herbivores are primary consumers they are, they come in the first strata of the uh, uh, ecological uh, food pyramid which i am going to show subsequently so these are the animals which feed on the uh, plant uh, plants or the producers and uh, uh, something that feeds on the plants or the producers are called as herbivores best examples are rabbit deer goat cattle etc then secondary consumers also called as second order consumers are primary primary carnivores right carnivore is something that herbivore and carnivore what is the difference herbivore is something that is herbivores are consumers there is no doubt herbivores are a type of consumers but they depend on herbal means plant based foods carnivore are also consumers but carnivores are something that depends on the other living things right so carnivores are something that depends on the other living things which is nothing but the herbivores you can see so the animal which feeds on the herbivores are called as primary carnivores like for example cats foxes snakes etc uh they 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 are all something that that uh, uh, eat only the uh, you know plant based food material right so they are they are the uh, primary carnivores then the tertiary carnivores are also called as third order carnivores or consumers tertiary consumers sorry tertiary consumers or third order consumers also called as secondary carnivores right so uh, secondary carnivores uh, these are the large carnivores which feed on the secondary consumers uh, like uh, uh, the uh, cats or foxes or snakes they are nothing but uh, one of the example is wolf which depends on the secondary consumers right they are called as tertiary consumers then depending on these there is something called as quaternary consumers or fourth order consumers also called as omnivores right they are called as omnivores omnivores are um, i am sorry for this ad the word advertisements in between uh, right please uh, remove that so uh, what are uh, what are omnivores these are the largest carnivores which feed on the tertiary consumers and are not eaten up by any other animal for example lions and tigers right so uh, uh, human beings also come in this particular category right we are also omnivores because omnivores are something that can depend on any of these things right we can we can, human beings for example can be herbivores can be primary carnivores or can, can be secondary carnivores or can be uh, quaternary consumers so, so we belong to any of these categories because we can eat any of these things right we, we just need to uh, cook it that's it so we can eat any of these things that's the reason we are being called as omnivores okay so this is the uh, complex uh, relationship that exists in this uh, uh, ecosystem called as uh, categories of the consumers which you all should be knowing and remembering for be, for being able to answer the multiple choice questions so what are decomposers so decomposers are also called as reducers right reducers so bacteria and fungi belong to this category because they break down the dead organic material or producers like plants or the consumers like animals for their food and release to the environment uh, the simple inorganic and organic substances produced as by products of their metabolisms right 
So uh, here you need to know that uh, uh, decomposers play a very crucial role. Uh, you are seeing decomposers every day, and uh, you cannot, we cannot exist uh, living without the presence of decomposers, right? For example, uh, if if uh, imagine a condition where you won't have decomposers at all in the ecosystem or in the biosphere, right? So the dead matter will be as it is. It gets rotten, right? It is going to smell, and it it becomes very difficult for us to survive. But this is not happening because all the dead matter is getting mixed into the soil, and it is getting uh, you know uh, what can I say uh, assimilated into the components of the uh, of the environment very easily. And uh, thanks to the role the decomposers play, because bacteria and fungi they play a very very important role in disintegrate disintegrating the components into the environment. That's why they are also called as eco cleansers. Bacteria and fungi, yeah, of course you know bacteria causes diseases and all, but not all bacteria are bad. Please do remember this. Not all bacteria are bad. Many bacteria are there which are very very helpful, and I don't know how many of you know that uh, there are a lot of bacteria that that exists in our own intestine, right? They are called as intestinal microflora. You know that. So in our body itself, in our small intestine, there are a lot of symbiotic bacteria that are there. Those bacteria are responsible for a process called as fermentation that happens inside our body. And without fermentation, we can't digest food, right? So we are able to survive every day because of the presence of that bacteria, which are symbiotically living in our body, and they are helping us. So please do understand that not all bacteria are bad. Many bacteria are very very friendly. They play a crucial role in the existence of the uh, of this uh, uh, you know ecosystem. And uh, uh, such bacteria and fungi are called as decomposers because their simple function is decompose. They are going to just disintegrate or break down the dead organic material. They are going to uh, use it for their own purposes because they are going to break down and they are going to uh, derive energy from that. They can survive, and at the same time, when they decompose, what comes out of the decomposition is nothing but inorganic material uh, or organic substances, which can be the byproducts, which which are very very useful. For example, urea, right? Urea comes out of decomposition. So we might not be able to consume urea, but a plant likes urea. It wants urea. It can grow because of urea. So urea comes only because of decomposition of the previous existing dead plants or previous existing dead animals. They are going to decompose, and recycling of this energy keeps on happening in the environment. And this is the the most dynamic uh, component that you need to remember. So these substances are uh, reused by the producers, resulting in uh, you know cyclic exchange of material between the biotic community and the abiotic environment of the ecosystem. And the decomposers thus are called as saprotrophs. You can see this is a very important word. Sapros means rotten, trophos means feeder. Saprotrophs means something that feeds on the rotten material or called as saprotrophs i'm sure all of you have seen decomposers with your open eyes right for example if you want to see take a bread uh, from the loaf is take a slice of the bread and keep it in open air for uh, one or two days within two two days or three days you can see fungus starts growing right fungus starts growing and after few days if you if you leave it like that of course it smells but if you can resist and leave it like that you can say after few days you you can't see bread there because everything is uh, you know consumed by the uh, fungus and uh, uh, it is gone right so the same is the way with the dead bodies right of course we are burying we think that we are burying and it is going inside but what basically happens to the body inside is it gets decomposed not in the case if it is the body is burnt but if the body is buried inside uh, it it gets decomposed now a lot of animals right last rites for the dead body is not done by every every uh, living being or every living thing that is uh, dead right animals for example if they die they just people just throw it uh, onto the open fields right in the open field uh, few days it is going to smell of course 
After a few days, you you won't see that dog or cat which is dead because the decomposition has happened and it has gone into the soil. This is a beautiful process that happens because of the bacteria. And if if you if you imagine a condition where bacteria are not there and always the dead body is there as it is without getting decomposed, you cannot exist, right? We will not have place to walk. Also, so many dead bodies would have been there on this earth. Same is the case with a tree. Imagine a tree is dead, tree is cut down, the part of the tree like stems and roots and all. You can see it, uh, you, you can see it for few days and after few days you, you can't see it because it starts getting decomposed, it goes inside, it starts becoming fossil fuel. Right, friends? Here is the engineering concept that you need to know. Please do remember that these dead components, when they get decomposed, starts becoming something called as fossil fuels, which is the most important alternative form of energy. And in module 2, I am going to discuss with you what are fossil fuels in a very great detail. So for now, please do understand that these are the decomposers. So we have seen uh, producers, the different categories of consumers, then we have seen decomposers also called as reducers. So how is the energy flow happening in the ecosystem? What is energy flow? <coughs> what is energy flow? How the energy flows? All of you have seen uh, from your uh, school days, you would have been understanding a concept. Now you are in engineering, all the more you know. You, you know there is some, you know something called as flow chart, right? What is the difference between a normal diagram and a flow chart? The, yeah, the difference is normal diagram is where you see a structure and uh, the components of the structure and something like that mentioned within the picture, within a picture, right? It, it is for one particular concept. But if you want to sh show the connection between 10 different concepts, the best way is representing it in the form of a flow chart. Right? So after process 1, put an arrow, process 2, put an arrow, process 3. This is a flow chart. So why I am telling this is uh, energy flow in the ecosystem also can be represented in the form of a flow chart. We are going to see that. So what is energy flow first of all is uh, all of you please do understand i'm i'm reading sentence one please do accept the fact that energy moves life i think all of you accept this without energy we cannot go ahead with any process in our life right for you to get up for you to uh, you know brush for you to take bath for you to have breakfast for you to walk for you to you know, go for your work, for you to study, for you to understand, for you to read, for you to do anything, energy is needed. And this energy always comes from something else. Right? We have to depend on something else for that energy. It can be water, it can be fruits, it can be vegetables, it can be your breakfast, it can be it can be anything, but we, we are dependent on something for that energy. Because we can't produce energy by ourselves. We are not plants. We have to, even a plant has to depend on sun energy, solar energy. Please do remember that. Even a plant, even if plant is having chlorophyll and uh, uh, it can do photosynthesis and all, imagine uh, it is not being supplied with solar energy at all. Nothing can happen. So solar energy is the initiator of all the energy pro flow processes that happens in the ecosystem. So this is a very, very important uh, thing that you need to know. So energy moves life and the cycle of energy is based on the flow of the energy through different trophic levels. So here I am going to introduce you to a very small word called as a trophic level. Right? Because here also some multiple choice questions I am going to ask. That's why I am stressing. So trophic level is a very, very important word. Right? And the, the, the cycle of energy is based on the flow of the energy through these different trophic levels in the ecosystem. And our ecosystem is maintained by the cycling energy and the nutrients obtained from different external sources. So unless and until the external sources help, an ecosystem can't exist. And those external sources are solar energy, air, water, 
soil which are nothing but the other three components of the first diagram that I am told which is nothing but atmosphere, hydrosphere and lithosphere. So these are the external sources unless the external sources help ecosystem can't exist. So let us see what is a trophic level. Try to understand very very carefully what is a trophic level. So trophic level refers to the position an organism occupies in a food chain. So we are slowly getting into the into the details of the biosphere if you are understanding. Right? We have seen ecosystem. We are further going into something called as trophic levels. So friends, follow this picture very carefully so that you can answer the different multiple choice questions very very easily. What is a trophic level? Trophic level is a position that an ecosystem or that an organism occupies in a food chain. What is a food chain? We are going to see in the next slide. That is nothing but a flow diagram. So, to which position we belong to? Because we have, we have, I have already told you that biosphere has many living things, which includes animals, hum, human beings, animals, plants bacteria fungi everything is there so many living things are there in the biosphere but not all of them belong to the same category right and we are differentiated into different categories in the biosphere only sub sub categories are there and that sub categories that are there in the biosphere are called as trophic levels you can see actually this this uh, uh, you can see if you if you put an outer line this looks like a triangle right this looks like a triangle which which you have actually termed in a three dimensional way if you look at a triangle it is termed as a pyramid right this is what you call as a pyramid which i am going to show so the trophic levels are named as simple simple words first trophic level second trophic level third trophic level fourth trophic level please understand this diagram from bottom to top right first trophic level second trophic level third trophic level fourth trophic level maximum it can go up to fifth trophic level fifth trophic level also is there i have not represented here but you can imagine fifth trophic level also but the only thing is what is important for you to know is the size of this trophic level which is represented in the form of bars sleeping bars here you can see the biggest one so that the pyramid has to form no the pyramid can form only if the bottom is long and as it goes the bottom the size has to reduce this is the nature of the trophic levels so the first trophic level will always be long, second trophic level will always be little small, further smaller is a secondary, uh, sorry, the third trophic level, small, even, even smaller is the fourth trophic level and the smallest should be the fifth trophic level. So what is interesting for you to know here is who occupies the different levels. Here you see once again, I, I am going to, uh, I, I am explaining the reason why plants are given such an important position because first trophic level is understood to be occupied by producers, which are nothing but the plants, right? Producers, primary producers are nothing but plants because they are the only uh, living thing that can produce food by itself they, are, they form the first trophic level depending on them primary consumers which are called as herbivores they are found to be occupying the second trophic level depending on them secondary they are in the third trophic level depending on them <laughs> tertiary they are in the fourth trophic level depending on them uh, quaternary which are in the fifth trophic level I hope you have understood this diagram very uh, importantly because it's it's a very important uh, picture for you to understand. I am going to ask in a multiple choice question paper which of these consumers or which of these 
components occupy third trophic level who are going to occupy fourth trophic level who are going to occupy fifth trophic level who are going to occupy first trophic level or i in reverse i am going to ask plants occupy which trophic level first trophic level second trophic level third trophic level fourth trophic level or i am going to ask a snake occupies which trophic level third trophic level or fourth row you need to there are there are n number of combinations i am going to ask so unless you understand this picture you can't answer those questions so please follow this very very sincerely and carefully so first trophic level second trophic level third trophic level fourth trophic level first trophic level occupied by primary producers examples of this are already given in the previous slides so please re refer to them second trophic level occupied by primary consumers third trophic level occupied by secondary consumers fourth trophic level occupied by tertiary consumers fifth trophic trophic level occupied by quaternary consumers and you can see producers are always found in the first trophic level friends if you have followed the concept clearly it's very very important that you need to know that the biggest trophic level should always be at the bottom and we already know that producers occupy the first trophic level which means to say compared to the you know consumers any of these categories of consumers producers numbers number should be maximum which means compared to the total count of human beings and plant animals uh, and any of these things uh, the, uh, you know living things the maximum number in the living things category should be for the number of trees and plants which means greenery should be maximum but what is happening we are going to see in the subsequent slides so please do understand this for now very important concept called as trophic levels and the different levels of the uh, uh, you know trophic levels the, the, the different trophic levels so energy flow which you have already seen in the previous slide the same way same slide which which where you can see solar energy being taken by producers producers taken by consumers and consumers and producers being taken up by decomposers and everything you can see there is going to be from whenever energy flow is happening there is going to be heat that is getting generated and this heat that is uh, which means uh, all the energy flow processes in the ecosystem are by default exothermic processes all of you know what is an exothermic reaction exothermic reaction is where heat energy is released into the system you know this is a heat energy when sun energy is taken by producers heat is liberated producers are going to be consumed they're taken up by consumers heat is liberated consumers are taken up by decomposers heat is liberated right and the nutrients goes and producers once again the cyclic process happens so whenever energy flow happens from one level trophic level to the other trophic level heat is getting liberated and this heat is what is getting released into the uh, you know ecosystem it is it is getting released into the environment and friends this heat is what is actually responsible for the global warming phenomena that is taking place right global warming phenomena is an extreme end but actually heat is heat should be liberated but global warming is happening because of the overheat that is getting generated over population over consumption when there is over consumption because of the over population over amount of heat is getting liberated and this heat is responsible for not just keeping the uh, uh, you know uh, the the warmth of the climate or the environment it is actually heating it up it is heating up the environment which is called as global warming so which we are going to all those concepts we are going to see in the next modules so this is the energy flow in the ecosystem and there are different ways one of the way we have seen in the previous slide uh, uh, where you have seen a pyramid but not just a pyramid there are so many other ways of representing this energy flow 
and that are different ways i am going to show just in the form of different different pictures very colorful pictures i am going to show where you can easily understand how a energy flow can be represented so energy flow can be represented in the form of a food chain it can also be represented in the form of a food web or it can be represented in the form of a pyramid food chain food web food energy pyramid all of them all all of them mean the same at the end but the way that they, they are being represented is different so i am not going to explain them because i am not going to ask any descriptive questions in this but i am going to just show out of out of curiosity uh, that you might be getting right now i'll just show how a chain looks like how a web looks like and finally end up with how a pyramid looks like you can see uh, uh, yeah this is how a food chain looks like right there, I, I don't know how many of you have seen it right uh, just just if you want to exp a, a simple explanation you can see once again all the all the things will be the same but only thing is it is represented in the form of chain by means of arrow right you can see producer takes up the solar energy and producer is going to produce the energy depending on the producer which is a flower in this case there will be a consumer which is a caterpillar caterpillar consumed by frog frog taken up by consumed by snake snake taken up by owl so it is a unidirectional way that the flow of the energy is happening you can see flower to caterpillar caterpillar to frog frog to snake snake to owl when there is a unidirectional way of energy flow that is taking place that becomes a food chain that becomes a food chain here it is a grazing food chain because uh, it is happening in the grass ecosystem maximum right don't worry about these names but this is how the uh, food chain looks like this is also a food chain you can see a detritus food chain actually the food chain that happens in decomposers is called as a detritus food chain so this is also unidirectional you can see only arrows are being represented i am not explaining in detail because i am not going to ask any descriptive questions here just to show you right this is how a web looks like web is much much complicated web is very very complicated this is how a soil food web for example looks like just just explaining you uh, i am not going to ask any questions in this you can see why it is called as a web you can see once again the verbs things starts with the solar energy and solar energy is taken up by the plant and producers are going to be the initiators of the web there is no doubt about that it is the same but later it gets complicated you can see the food material from the plant which is a plant shoot is eaten up by fungi fungi is eaten up by for example i am going in one direction fungi is eaten up by some nematodes that nematode is eaten by a bigger nematode that uh, you know bigger nematode is eaten by arthropod uh, the arthropod is eaten by a bird so if you consider only this line it looks like a food chain but actually it is not the case this fungi is not just taken by this nematode this fungi can be taken up by an arthropod that can be eaten up by another arthropod that can be eaten by a bird or this fungi need not come actually this nematode itself can feed on the uh, plant material from there it can take up right or this uh, plant material can die they can become organic matter they can be taken up by bacteria bacteria taken by protozoa it can be taken by a nematode that can be you can see it can go in a very very complicated webby fashion so that's why it is a food web food webs are when will food web happen is when there are multiple consumers for this for the same food item say for example for this plant material not just fungi a fungi can be a can can be predating or can be consuming this or a nematode can be consuming it or the organic matter can be the, the bacteria can be depending on the organic matter so when, when there are multiple consumers for the same food item it becomes a food web but you can see here in this case it is not like that they, a uh, 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 owl will not pick up a caterpillar or an owl will never pick up a frog the flow ha should have to happen in a unidirectional fashion same is the case here but web is not like that web can be very very complicated
once again telling you i'm not going to ask this question but it is important that you need to know because we are studying environmental science so this is how an aquatic web, food web looks like in the, in the in aquatic means in the in the water body can be an ocean or can be a river or can be a pond or can be a pool in all of them this kind of ecosystem which is a web can exist it is aquatic food web i am not going to explain this this is how a food web in forest looks like this looks interesting for, for you might be easy for you to understand you can see green plant taken up by goat goat eaten by jackal jackal eaten by lion or goat directly eaten by a lion or green plant taken up by rabbit rabbit eaten by jackal jackal by by lion or rabbit by wild cat wild cat by lion you can see or green plant material by mouse mouse taken by rabbit uh, or mouse taken by wild cat or mouse taken by owl you can see this is how a web looks like a complicated structure so this is how it looks in forest and this is how food grass uh, food web web in a grassland looks like you can see uh, uh, you can understand this right so just go through this picture when i give the slides this is how it looks in a grassland and this is how a pyramid looks like so we have seen how a food chain looks like we have seen how food web looks like and uh, this is how uh, a pyramid looks like pyramid very simple pyramid is where trophic levels are being represented trophic levels are being represented you can see this right this is a first trophic level second trophic level third trophic level fourth trophic level might be a fifth trophic level right so solar energy is taken up only by the first trophic level which are nothing but producers so when the solar energy is taken up by the producers and producers produce food by themselves right they become the most important components of the ecosystem so depending on the producers there are prime pro, primary consumers so when the primary consumer when when from solar energy it comes to the producers heat is getting liberated producers to primary consumers heat is getting liberated primary consumers to secondary consumers heat is getting liberated secondary consumers to tertiary consumers heat is getting liberated tertiary to quaternary once again heat will be liberated this is what is the exothermic processes that i told in the previous picture same previous picture but in a different here here in the in the, within the trophic level this uh, animal diagrams are being represented plant and animal diagrams are being represented so that you can understand it very very easily got it friends so a, a comparison of how a food chain looks like how a food web looks like and how a pyramid looks like these are the three important things that you need to know so uh, uh, i am going to end uh, lecture 2 here uh, and uh, continue with the concepts of the remaining concepts of uh, what can i say the uh, environment and the ecosystem in the next class right next class we are going to see something called as biodiversity and we are going to end up this module by trying to understand the threats of the bio biodiversity in the ecosystem <coughs>